Another episode of Foul Mouth Fishing. Um, today's going to be a little different because I'm going to throw a twofer in. I did a, a big shopping haul, actually two separate shopping hauls at Dick's. Uh, I'm going to talk about one item that I got. I'll split that up into two videos. But uh, with talking with the store-bought item, I'm going to also throw in a real quick shout-out for a, an item you can't buy in stores. So uh, we'll start off with the item from Dick's. Um, today, rainy day, I decided to run down, and uh, I got a couple of items in here, a lot of which are definitely going into our giveaway for our Christmas in July. Uh, I had previously done a run to Dick's with, uh, with a coupon, and so I have some stuff that I haven't even uh, cracked into. Add it all to that video um, and share that with you. But while I was at Dick's, in keeping with our box unboxings, uh, waiting on my Angler's Hall, my... <sighs> fish vault and my mystery tackle box for this month um, which fish vault should be coming uh, for the April month and it should have in it supplied a fish finder so we're really gonna find out whether fish vault is uh, true to word or if they're gonna go to the birds uh, but in lieu of that I figured I'd pick up another retail box and in this time you know it's spring and right now is the time to catch the biggest, biggest fish you can find. The biggest bass, those pre-spawn females loaded with eggs, those feeding males and females before the spawn. Um, throw the big baits. Throw the big, uh, big uh, swim baits. Throw your large-sized spinner baits. Throw the big-sized, um, you know, craw trailers on a jig head. Uh, but on the other side of that, if you're creek fishing, if you got just a little tiny feeder pond. Why not go for some smaller fish, too? Because for me, sizes and everything, sometimes I just like to get out and catch anything. And for that, I figured I'd give it a shot since we've done the elites, we've done the, uh, the pros, we've done the Moab, the, uh, the mother of all bass boxes, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the big one. Um, I figured I'd go for the panfish. This is box number 83 retail of the Mystery Tackle Boxes panfish and trout kit. So I like fishing for trout and panfish also. Grab a knife here. Um, you know, it can, it, it, it's fun. It's fun to go pan fishing. I love catching, uh, you know, sunnies, catching, uh, you know, we have a lot of pumpkin seed. Uh, obviously, New Jersey, if you watch Run, One Rod, One Reel, just posted a video uh, recently, and he's got, uh, he actually landed on Jersey's trout stocking program. So uh, on April, I think it's the 10th, he posted a, uh, a video that Sunday of him with another New Jersey native fisherman that invited him, and they just happened to come across one of the areas where uh, New Jersey was stocking trout. Uh, I personally shy away from fishing the day of stocking. That's just me personally. I like the fish to get acclimated. I don't like to see them come off the truck and be hooking them right out of the, out of the truck. I think that's just... You know, that's shooting fish in a barrel, that's not fishing. Um, but that's me, that's just my, my philosophy. So what do we got in here? Box number 83, just like the others, you've got a nice little sleeve, and then you've got your standard MTV box inside. These uh, come five to six baits in a box. Uh, I think the elites were, uh, were, I think, 10 or 11, 12 baits. Um, so we have five to six. All right, we got ourselves a dibble. Let's see if it's... Number 12 of the ones about where do fishermen poop. Uh, <laughs> I think I jinxed myself. Where do anglers poop? How to, draw, how to tie a palomar knot. Um, yeah, too many of these. I keep getting the same bloody dibble. I'm tired of them. We'll move on to the, the brass tacks. Uh, we've got ourselves a what's in the box sticker this time. Um, again, these don't list a retail value. Uh, for the items, but they do list an items list, which I appreciate. 
Um, again, hearkening back to a previous conversation, one of the MTB um, uh, spokesmen and an MTB staff member um, higher up actually commented on my videos when I was talking about going into stores like Walmart, um, Dick's, etc., coming across these boxes where the sleeves are torn open, the boxes are torn open, and baits are strewn everywhere. Sometimes the box is just left on the shelf empty, and the baits are just on the shelf here, there, and everywhere, and you really don't know what you've missed. And it's just, it's terrible. If you're out there, be mindful of people. Just don't, don't crack into boxes. Don't be a low-life, no-class piece of trash. Leave stuff alone. If you're going to buy it, buy it. If you see your kids cracking into these boxes, tell them. You know, parental guidance. Um, you know, knock it off. Be respectful to others. If you want to buy it, you want to buy what you want to buy, and you want to make sure that the items included in your purchase are included in your purchase. You don't want some guy spiking a, a bait out, you get home and find out you're a bait or two short of what you're supposed to have. So I do appreciate the spokesperson from MTB uh, chiming in, and I do appreciate them putting in these bait cards, so at least you have an itemized list to see that you have the same number of baits, and the baits do align with what was originally scheduled to come in your box. That all said, let's start. This will be quick. There's only five, five items in here, and then we'll talk to my buddy and his uh, father-in-law's uh, very good eco economical and ecological um, uh, uh, recycling for his bait shop. So, Carl's Amazing Baits Whippersnapper. So let's look under here and find a Carl. Oh, there's a Carl's thing right here. Carl's Amazing Baits, the Whippersnapper, one to four foot little micro square bill. So we got a little micro square bill, one to four foot diver. Crack into it. Really nifty, uh, nifty pattern. Cotton candy is the color. It's a transparent pink, orange, blue. Wow. Tequila sunrise, eat your heart out. Two trebles, nice little, it's not a square, well, not really a square bill, but no, it's a square bill. Little, little bill beveled off there. It's not a computer chip lip, but that's really nifty. This is definitely going to find its way into my ultralight kit. Um, guarantee you can catch a bluegill on that. You can get, uh, you probably catch a little bass on that too, um, cranking away. One to four foot, that's awesome. Great for a little stream that's got some nice little drop-offs, uh, little pond and lake. That's that's nifty, and it's, and it's getting increasingly hard to find uh, little micro uh, baits. Now that being said, we'll see how it casts. Um, I do have my BFS set set up. I have my ultralight set up on spinning gear. I have my BFS uh, bait caster. Um, so we'll see how this uh, how this throws in and out of the wind. Uh, being it doesn't give me an exact weight. Oh, it does. One sixth ounce. Okay, so it's one and a half inches, and it's a sixth of an ounce. So that's not too light. Um, so that's pretty cool. Next, Vexen. Vexen has their Rattle and Wasp. So that's definitely not okay. Another little cranker. Uh, this one is a circular bill. Now this is for your bass, walleye, and crappy. So the Rattle and Wasp Perch Goblin is the color. Definitely see the perch pattern, but it's like a blue-silver color. That's pretty cool. It's got the red front treble to cue them in on that blood, you know, that desire for blood. Nice little bill. Let's see, this one. Uh, the number four wasp is six for casting and trolling. Goes to six feet? No. No way. Number four, it's a one-sixth ounce, is six foot for casting and trolling. Okay, that's what it says. Little dash on there. I'd be surprised to see that six foot water, but maybe. If you're trolling it, I could see that getting there, yeah. All right, so hey, one-sixth ounce, another micro, uh, another little micro casting crankbait. That is pretty darn nifty. I do like that red trouble, which is officially not letting me close the package. <laughs> there we go. So that's pretty cool. I like that. And that's a cool color. That cotton candy, I like translucent patterns, especially in clear water. Uh, so that's really cool. I got two one sixth ounce micro little crankbaits. Something different. Uh, next, Weston. Name brand, big, big ticket, very expensive. These are their Mega Tees. 
So these are tiny little finesse soft plastic, two inch uh, little fishing soft plastic baits. These are your drop shot baits. It even shows a drop shot and a tiny little ball head jig on there. Open these up. Weston always has really, really good plastic material. They are a premium price product, so I expect to get good quality soft plastic out of them. Some durability, but some, some definite uh, soft pliable. All right, so it is very durable plastic. It's got little eyes in there. See them? You got this little orange back, pearl front. Now what's funny is the fins, the, the tail fins, are not actually perpendicular to the body. They're parallel to the body, so it's a dolphin tail style. So obviously for the drop shot, that little, look, geez, I'm just, I'm just standing here. That's my heartbeat causing that tip to flutter. So that's pretty awesome. So it's definitely pliable, plenty of action on that. Definitely perfect for a drop shot. I think I'd use this over rigging it on like a trout magnet head. Um, that probably also might work. I might even try that. I might throw this on one of the trout, trout magnets jig heads um, and see, uh, see how that works. But uh, love the clamshell packaging. I'm not one for clamshells all the time. Typically I take my soft plastics out and put them in a, in a Plano, in like a 3700 or whatever, and organize it that way. But something so small and delicate that you don't want to lose uh, little fins and tear them up and bend them, especially when they're this small, you want to keep them true, keep them in the, in the uh, clamshells. So micro lures, ultralight stuff, I tend to save those clamshells. All right, next up we've got from Dynamic Lures, Attack Swim Jig. Uh, Dynamics Attack Swim Jig. So we've had similar of these little jig heads and two little, or four little paddle tails. Yeah, four little plastic paddle tails. Two jig heads, so you get one pre-rigged and, uh, and one backup. So that's pretty cool. Again, nice durable plastic. It's not an Elastec product, but it's pretty durable. This one's like a green pumpkin red flake, and you get Oop, you get one pre-rigged here, one pre-rigged in the package, and a backup jig head with a really cool, it's got really nice eyes, and it's definitely a stand-up style jig head, um, so that's pretty cool. And again, four bodies in total, the pre-rigged and three backups. Not bad, not bad at all. And, this away, and our final, bait in our pan fish from Gappen Nickelhead Ripple Twist. So Gappen's Nickelhead Ribbon Twist. Unfortunately the size on this is not marked out, um, but it is basically for your little floating rig. You know you put a little weighted uh, bobber on this and then you let it settle underneath. It's two little tiny ribbon tail grubs. Let's see. Unfortunately, they've got these things. Well, maybe not unfortunately. Good for them that they're not going to lose them. So you have two little tiny ribbon tail, tail grubs on little ball head jigs. That's pretty cool. Definitely good for crappy. Certainly good sight fishing. Uh, once the bluegill spawn kicks in, you could sight fish for bluegill with these without any problems because that chartreuse yellow color is definitely going to be easy to see uh, in the water. That's pretty cool. So, yep, and that's what they got. They got this thing uh, just on an under, on a, on a slipping lock flute um, and then bouncing it off the bottom with the, uh, with the ball head jig and dragging it across the bottom, semi-trolling style. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is the 8th or the 64th or the 132nd ounce because they don't have the little marking checked off. So I'll have to put it on my old scale and uh, and come to see exactly what it is. So that's not bad. So you got five items. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think uh, this was a good pan fishing box? Is this something you'd grab on holiday 
throw out to uh, to your kid. Let them go catch some crappie, catch some some bluegill, pumpkin seed, maybe even a bass or two. Um, obviously, little swim baits on an under, on a drop shot are epic for that. So leave in the comments below. What do you think of the MTB's number 83 panfish box? Um, with that said, from store to front door, um, this is really cool. So I work with a guy and uh, in Mark's stepfather, George, he, uh, he basically goes out and he collects, he goes and cleans up and collects lost sinkers and weights. And he takes the lead, he melts it down in a melting pot, he makes uh, hooks, and he makes his own jigs. Um, he works down in, in you know Ocean County area uh, by the shore, so these are basically saltwater supply jigs, and, and he just makes a whole lot of them. Hand paints them, has his own little setup, and uh, recently he, he's, uh, he's been dealing with some health issues, so we all want to wish him the best of prayers with that. But, uh, you know... I came across this and, and was talking, and I said, yeah, send me some. I want to see what this guy does. And I was, I was very well impressed. These are a little heavier for, than what you guys are doing for fresh water. Um, maybe if you're really doing in some really heavy river current, some of this stuff would work for you. But he makes all varieties of weights. He just gave me a handful of some of his more popular ones. So we've got, he comes from, uh, he has his little shop he calls Black Widow Jigs. And uh, George started out with a two and a half inch saltwater ready jig that's really cool definitely good for trolling down in, in salt water um, we've got ourselves some one and a half inch or excuse me one and a half ounce jigs this is that same hand painted chartreuse with that green like green speckle paint blends it into that sand color he comes up with a, a more dark green with a little cue of orange in there which I like. He's got that little orange belly on there. Some kind of like, uh, he takes, I think he takes a paintbrush and kind of flicks it on there because it's got that little bit of splatter paint kind of, uh, kind of coloring to it. Uh, we've got our one ounce. Give me two of these one ounces again. One in that yellow, this one's yellow and green and blue kind of color, which is awesome. This one's more orange with just a, a, a little spot of a green on it. And he gave me a pretty much an all green one in a three quarter ounce, uh, which I've already taken out and, and used and had pretty good success. Super sharp, sticky hooks. He sharpens them up really, really nice. Again, they're made for salt water, so they're made for toothy critters. But really great hard paint. I've taken this out, I've banged it off of rocks, hasn't nip chicked, done anything. It's, it's held up extremely well. Um, standard, just your, your little ball on the bottom as your keeper. Um, I'd like to see him have like a wire tie keeper on the end, but, uh, right now these are just, you know, hand, these are all hand poured. These aren't like, you know, major mold manufacturing. Does each one by hand, which is awesome craftsmanship. And as always, every one of these, including this one, those eyelets are clear. There is no paint jammed up there in his powder coating. So, uh. I think that's awesome. Pride and craftsmanship, and this is something that I think is really cool. Not only is it a lost trade to have handmade jigs, uh, most of them are more modern. Even the guys that say they're handmade are just going and buying fresh raw lead and pouring it into a mold that they buy from a major manufacturer like Do It, and it's not really handmade. It's just one step down from mass production. Um, this guy really does put the artistry back into the old, old way of doing these jigs. Um, I just couldn't say thank you enough to Mark for supplying it to me, and thank you very much um, to Mark's stepdad, or I should say father-in-law. Um, God bless you. Thank you for, uh, for, for keeping traditions alive, and I hope you stay alive for a long, long time to come and, uh, and keep putting out some pretty good products. So for me to all of you, um, our thoughts and prayers go out to George, and uh, thank you all. For, uh, for joining me on this. Um, I will try to get some information, if you want, about these jigs. I want your comments on that box. Uh, tell me, what did you think? Um, 
What do you think? Do you think there's some, some lost traditions? Is there any traditions that you have? Hand tying flies, making jigs, um, soft plastic pouring, uh, making wooden, wooden plugs, things like that. What kind of old world craftsmanships are, are still out there that you hope don't go away to the Amazons and the Walmarts and the mass, mass production Chinese knock off, you know, a billion in an hour uh, kind of uh, craft. So, uh, as always, I love the interactions. Thank you for sharing some time with me. Comment down below. Give me some inter interactions. And as always, for me to you, I'll catch you guys on the next cast. Peace, hookaholics. But that's not by speculation. But the position that I got, I climbed too high to fall, went too hard to drop.